We are now being joined by Syed Awad. We'll begin with a few questions. Steve Jewin, your line is now live. Syed, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. We've had many opportunities in the past, and I'm grateful that you're here and on this card. But how frustrated are you after being in Bellator for over a decade to currently be on a four-fight losing streak? Is that a question you really need to ask me? I mean, how question do you think it is? I mean, you know, you know, it's always frustrating to lose one fight, shit, let alone two. But to lose four, fuck, man, it's definitely frustrating. But it's not something that I, I, I thought about this camp. I just, you know, I always try to take one fight at a time, whether I'm winning or losing, you know, on a winning or losing streak. So, uh, you know, I just got to go out there and perform and not put that pressure of being on a losing streak uh, in my head. So that's something, like I said, I try not to think about. And I uh, just go out there and perform like I know how to perform and get back on a winning streak after I win. Well, speaking of those camps, obviously things have changed a lot since we saw you twice in October last year. What's the training like for you now? Honestly, it's been the same, man. I mean, uh, right when COVID hit, I was training before COVID hit because I was supposed to fight back in May. So I was getting ready for a fight in May, and then uh, COVID hit, and so the cars got canceled. Everything got shut down, and I continued training at my house, just strength conditioning. And then my, my coach called all of us, said, listen, I'm opening the gym just for the pros. So we still trained, you know what I mean? We still trained, we got ready, and then uh, I was supposed to fight last month, and I, like a, a month and a half ago, and then I caught like a viral pink eye. And it lasted like two weeks, so they, they pulled me from the card. And then right away, I jumped right back into camp, and now I'm here. All right, one last thing from me. What do you think of Mendel Nalo as an opponent on Thursday? I think I think he's a good-looking guy. I think he's tall, he's handsome. Yeah, that's what I think. Donna? Donna, your line is now live. Okay, we'll go on to Mark. Mark, your line is now live. Uh, hi, Syed. Uh, my question for you is, in 2019, 2018, you were a very active fighter. It was um, this pandemic almost a blessing in disguise for you that you got to get some months away from the cage? Or um, would you have rather preferred to... You no, know? nah, man. I'm, I'm, uh, I have ADD, man. I go 100 miles per hour uh, with whatever I'm doing. If I'm at home, I'm doing... Uh, I like to be active. I, I'm not. I'm not a guy that's gonna sit on his couch and just let time go by. Um, you know, I'm fortunate enough to. I've been fighting for so long that, you know, my kids. I, I train and I'm home with my kids. I don't have a nine to five, so I don't spend, you know, eight hours at a job. You know, I do spend hours at the gym, but not eight hours continuously. I'll go, come home, go, come home. So, um, I, you know, I get to spend time with my kids. So the the only blessing I got out of the pandemic is, you know, I spent a little bit more time, you know, at home with the kids. I got to watch them grow, uh, but. Yeah. Man, I'm gonna be active, man. I want to fight as much as I can. You know, I'm getting older, and uh, I want to, you know, definitely fight fight out. You know, until I can't fight anymore, until I, you know, move on to something else. So, really, I'm not happy about it. But you know, the world kind of got put on standstill, and it is what it is. Uh, thank you. And um, going into this one this weekend, um, your your opponent uh, is not like the usual guy you're used to. Um, he um, you know, he's really young in promotion and you are, do you feel almost like weird that you're being matched up with him or? Uh, no, no. Cause it, it's part of it. It's part of, uh, matchmaking. You know, you, uh, you get these young guys that, uh, have a little bit of hype behind them. You know, they come from a good gym and then you have the guys that are veterans like me that you're like, okay, let's see if the hype matches up and you throw them against a guy like me. And then, you know, if he wins then it does. And if he doesn't, then it shows that, you know, he wasn't really ready yet and you know obviously you know he has a lot of you know talent and you know he's, he's definitely going to do good in his career but you know this fight's going to you know it's, it's going to be like a make or break for him i believe not even a make or break you know what i mean god forbid you know you know any of us get hurt but you know i think uh um i'm definitely going to stop that you know hype train that that is behind him you know he's a good kid but you know he has to fight me now don't know so, sorry about the uh the technical difficulties there earlier um in terms of in, in terms of the 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 welterweight uh, sort of division or, or, or the divisions you find yourself in, what do you make of the landscape of of, of, uh, of the welterweight in Bellator at the moment? Well, I'm fighting lightweight this fight. You oh, know, my sorry, last fight. lightweight. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, the, the belt's being held by a 45-pounder. You know, he's, he's really good. I take nothing from him. Uh, and he's but, locked up in, in another uh, competition. Yeah, exactly. So... 
um, I think, uh, you know, once I, once I win this fight, you know, I'm going to, you know, ask for whoever's the top, you know, two guys because I want to get right back in there. You know what I mean? I don't know how much time I have left in the sport. I know I have a couple more years, but sometimes you don't, you fight once a year. Sometimes you fight three, four times a year. So however many times I need to fight to get back on that, you know, back in that conversation, you know, I still believe I'm, you know, one of the best in Bellator and I just got to go out there and prove it. And then once I do, then, you know, hopefully the vision's open back up and, you know, that belt's on the line again. Uh, I, I did. I have two more, if you don't mind. One is, did you have any trepidation about coming back and fighting during the situation we're in at the moment? I know that cases are back on the up and things like that. Did, were you were you in any way concerned about about getting back in the cage? Not at all. Not at all, man. I, you, if you live in fear, you'll never be able to accomplish anything. You know what I mean? No matter what's going on, and uh, that's one thing I don't do. I don't live in fear, no matter what's going on, no matter how bad the situation is for anybody. I mean, I still wake up every day. I still have my coffee. I kiss my babies. And, you know, I go about my day, you know, whether there's a pandemic outside or whether, you know, everything's open. So I, I don't live in fear no matter what's going on and I'll never let something control me. Maybe uh, this question has been touched on before, but do you feel that this fight is make or break for you in the promotion? I mean, it's, it's up to the promotion. You know what I mean? I feel like uh, I put my neck out there whenever they needed me. I never turned down the fight. Uh, I fought, you know. I broke my ankle two weeks before one of my fights. You know, this is like three fights, but I literally broke my ankle, bone in my ankle. And uh, I, I, I I cut the top of my foot uh, five days out before I fought Gertz. And I got stitches, but I had them put them in the inside and I glued the top of my foot just so nobody would see it. I still fought. You know, I um, when I fought Benson Henderson, I tweaked my back really bad. I couldn't get off the stool before they, when they called my name to, to go stage. I couldn't get off the stool. They were like, dude, what's wrong with you? I was like, my back's just, I heard it before this fight. So I got up. I was like an old man, but I still went out there and I fought. You know, I mean, I, I put my lineup, my, my, myself out there plenty of times, plenty of times. And, uh, you know, I don't plan on losing regardless. So, you know, when I win, you know, I plan on you know, staying with Bellator and, you know, making my run back for the title. And, you know, we'll see how it goes. Thank you. Lenny? Hi, Sad. How are you? I'm doing great. How about yourself? Yeah, I'm doing good. Thank you. For, thank you for asking. Before this fight, you said you envisioned an early round in a free round war with your opponent. What type of Sad award can we expect to walk into the Bellator cage this weekend? I mean, I feel like you guys always get uh, the same one. You know what I mean? I always fight, you know, go out there and fight the way I know how to fight unless my opponent runs from me. You know, whenever I was in, you know, times I was in boring fights, it was either the, my opponent tried to wrestle me and I just, you know, was scrambling or whatever and then, or, you know, that my opponent ran from me and, you know, made it a boring fight. So I, I don't see uh, Mondale uh, running from me at all. You know, he, he likes to come forward. I like to come forward. And I know his ground game's you know, pretty slick. So who knows? He might come and try to wrestle me and make it an interesting fight. You know, and if so, I feel like my ground game's, you know, pretty solid. Uh, my, my wrestling scrambles are really good. So I think, I'll you know, I'll make it a three-round war if that happens. If not, you know what I mean? I, I think I can catch him. You know, and I'm sure I'm going to have to take one and give one. So you guys can see a good fight. Yeah. So while we're talking about the previous fights, what have you kind of learned from your previous losses? Um, I mean, uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. You know what I mean? It's uh, there's there's little things. You know, I'm pretty aggressive in some of my fights. Like when I fought Gertz, I I kind of thought I won that fight. You know, and I was aggressive. I was controlling the whole round. I did get dropped, but I came back. And I still feel like I, I won the round. I'm like, you know, what else could I do besides go out there and you know finish them? You know, fortunately, it's kind of hard to finish somebody that's a uh, backpedaling, you know, but uh, I take nothing from Gertz. He's a great guy. He's a great fighter. But I feel like, uh, you know, like I thought I won that fight, but I just know I got foot on the gas pedal a little bit more in, uh, in some of these fights because uh, it's kind of hard to win a decision these days when people kind of point fight. Rick Sanchez. Um, how are you? Great. How are you? Good. Um, my question is, um, what's um, your um, motivation going through after those four losses and now you're getting yourself to like, fight again? So what is like your motivation going through this again to fight this card? Uh, I'll be honest with you, man. I've been doing this so long. I, I don't need you know a loss to, to motivate me more. If I wasn't already motivated to, to train as hard as I could possibly train, then I'll, you're in the wrong sport, man, because it – if you didn't train as hard as you could, you go into the ring with doubts in your mind. And you go in the ring with doubts in mind, you're, you're, you're screwed. You know what I mean? Because once, you know, that, that cardio kicks in, it, it, 
it, you know, you get tired and you, you start playing tricks in your head and you're like, I wasn't ready because I didn't train hard enough. So that's not one thing I do. I train extremely hard, whether I'm, you know, on a four fight losing streak or a four fight winning streak. So, uh, you know, uh, the only different thing I made uh, this camp or this past year that has changed since I was on my winning streak is I'm back with my head coach. You know, my head coach, you know, they know me since I was a kid and uh, I was on my winning streak with them. And then I kind of scared away and, uh, you know, kind of got, you know, lost a couple of fights. But, um, you know, I'm back with him doing my, my striking, my jiu-jitsu, my wrestling. But I'm still doing my conditioning with the training lab where, where they really uh, excelled me with my conditioning. So I feel like you're going to get the best of me uh, this fight. Our final question comes from the line of Luis Morales. Go ahead, Luis. So, Seth, there is no secret on your losing streak, but also no shame in that. You lost to Benson Henderson and Paul Daly. For this one, you're the most, the, the more experienced fighter, so what's different entering this fight? Um, just my experience. I mean, my, uh, difference between me and him, I, I believe, is my experience. I believe uh, I'm uh, more well-rounded. You know, you know, the kid's going to come to fight. He's a great striker. He hides a lot of his stuff. He's good on the ground, so I think uh, it's going to be a great fight, and, uh, you know, hopefully my experience pulls me through and I get to win. All right. Thank you very much for the time, Syed. Good luck the rest of the week. Yep. Thank you, guys.